Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation today. I'm also Kereba Thomas. And in today's session, I want us to talk about insect pests or vegetables. Welcome. Starting from the learning outcomes, you as the learner by the end of this session, you should be able to, one, identify some of the most important insect pests or vegetables. Two, describe some of the most important insect pests or vegetables. Then three, you should also be able to explain the methods of controlling these insect pests or vegetables. Insect pests. Let's start by defining these insect pests. These are the insects that destroy or harm crop plants. They have an impact on crops' basic health as well as its productivity. This is to mean they can damage vegetables in home gardens at all stages of their growth, be it at the early stage or nearly the or the late stage, maybe let's talk about harvesting. They can also damage plants by cutting their roots, stems, or leaves. So let's start by discussing about aphids as our number one insect pest on vegetables. These are usually one to three millimeters in body size. They are soft-bodied insects and are either green, gray, or black in color. Some of them have wings, others are wingless, and therefore they are slow moving. Aphids cluster on the tips of shoots and have a harming effect on the plant whereby the suck up from the plant, thus reducing the plant's vigor. These aphids also cause harm to plants by spreading viruses which severely reduce the yields and quality of the plant. How can we control these aphids? We can do this by a biological control method. And this is by use of natural enemies to the aphids, known as the lessings and ladybirds. Other than that, we can also use sprays, whereby you can use sprays containing pyrethrum and pyronely butoxide, which can be used though crops should not be picked for one day after its use. We can also spray with garlic extract or hot cultural oils and hot cultural soaps. Number two, we shall discuss about caterpillars. They are usually the lower stages of moths and butterflies, I believe most of you have seen this. They are normally hairless with a long cylindrical body and range in color. How do they cause harm to the plant? Caterpillars can attack leaves, can attack the stem of the plant, the flower, fruit or root of the plant. Crops of the brassica family, such as the broccoli, cabbage, kale, and cauliflower, are attacked by green caterpillars of the large cabbage white butterfly and the small diamond bark moth. Cluster caterpillars 
woolly bear caterpillars and lower caterpillars attack the leaves of most vegetables, therefore causing harm to the vegetable crop. We shall also talk about the cutworms, which normally hide in the soil during by the day and attack plants during the night. They cause harm to the plants, that's majorly the young seedlings, by damaging their stem at the base, therefore causing the plants to collapse. How can we control these cutworms? We can use Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a biological insecticide which targets only the cutworms and can also be done after rain or overhead watering. That's a major control method controlling these cutworms. Apart from that, we have spinosad chemical, which is, is a low toxicity chemical. It has a translaminar movement. This simply means the chemical moves into the leaf of the plant, making the active ingredient resistant to rain, sunlight once the spray has dried. Sprays containing pyrethrum can also be used, but the crops cannot be picked for a day after spraying. Let's now talk about the grasshopper or the locust. They can appear in plagues or majorly they appear during plagues and are capable of destroying all plants. You remember there was one time in Kenya, some years back, that's 2019, the upper part, the northern part of our country was attacked by these locusts. They attacked crops, destroyed plants of most farmers, and they caused harm to all the plants, eating every part of the plant. That's a major harm of these locusts. How can we control this? You should know that it's sometimes hard or it is very hard to control them. Simply because a major control method of controlling these locusts is by use of baits, whereby you use the baits, but these locusts usually eat all the green vegetation of the crop first before they eat the bait. So we find that by the time you have controlled the pest, it has already caused harm. So that's the funny thing or the hardship farmers face when dealing with locusts. So let's discuss about thrips, whereby in terms of their length, they are about one to two millimeters, and they are torpedo-shaped insects with different colors, can be yellow, green, gray, or black. How do they cause damage to the vegetable crops? They suck sap from leaves, fruit, and flowers of the crop. This therefore results in white streaks on the plant. You can have a look at the picture shown below. Is of a vegetable crop, that's the lower part of the leaf. You can see the white streaks 
on the plant leaf. That is a damage caused by these trips. We also told that, or we can also find out that some species of these trips are carriers of tomato spotted wilt virus. This, this therefore means, apart from them causing harmful effects to the vegetable crop of sucking sap, they also bring in a new disease and different disease that is tomato spotted wilt virus. And how can we control these trips on our farms? We can use garlic extract or a horticultural soap or sprays containing pyrethrum or and piperonely bitoxide. Let's talk about the white flies. Most of you have seen this in our farms. They are usually tiny and 1.5 to 2 millimeters. That's in their size or length. We are told that the adults resemble small moths and fly in large numbers when disturbed. You find that at times when you walk through your farm, you reach up a point where you see these small tiny flies like moths flying in large numbers due to you, you, you being the farmer causing disturbance to them. So those are the white flies. During their young stages, they have wings and look more like scale insects. White flies can be difficult to control using pesticides. This is very important for you to know or more important for a farmer to know. But before we come to its control, despite it being difficult to control, let's see how they cause damage to crops. White flies, despite they look more of harmless, they usually suck up from vegetables, therefore damaging the vegetables, either in the open field or even greenhouses. Then how can we control them? Biologically, they are, they are these ladybirds and hoverflies, which can feed on these white flies. So it sometimes happens naturally in the field, that's the open field, where these ladybirds or hoverflies can feed on the white flies. It therefore helps in controlling them. Then you can control them using sprays too. These sprays can be like garlic extract sprays or the normal sprays containing pyrethra. You can also use horticultural soaps and soapy water which may also reduce the numbers. Very important to note. There being no much further ado, there's an activity for you to do. As a learner, having discussed some important insect pests, you are there for us to discuss on any other pests or vegetables and their control measures. This means necessarily it should not be that they are insects. So you can research on that and in our next class we review in it before we discuss 
on the major diseases in vegetable crops. Thank you so much for listening and watching this presentation. Be blessed. That's the end.